Thank you, Jesus. How to be God's channel for victory. How to be God's channel for victory. How many of you want to be God's channel? How many of you want to be God's channel? Lift up your hands. You want to be God's channel. Amen. Amen. How? Well, some of you haven't lifted up your hands. Come on. How many of you want to be God's channels? Lift up your hands. Amen. Amen. We mean business with God. Hey, we're not playing games here. So, how to be God's channel for victory? Why victory? It's a victory over the devil. There shouldn't be any failure in your vocabulary. Because your failure is the devil's victory. We need to have God's victory over the devil all the time. Over his attack. Against his attack. His attacks against individuals, couples, family, communities, nations, and mankind. We need to have victory over him and his team all the time. Jesus had already won the victory, but we are to enforce that victory. And Jesus had won that victory not just for one man, but for all of mankind. Not only for the saved, but also for the lost. It is so deceiving to think that God only wants my individual victory. That's a thought from the devil. God does not just want your individual victory. God wants a victory for you, your family, your household, your work, your community, your church, your nation, the nations around you, all of mankind. Don't ever forget that God is very big. God is very big. His heart is very big. You know, sometimes I feel so frustrated with myself that my heart is so little. And I pray and ask the Lord, stretch my heart. Make it bigger. Amen. Amen. God is so big. And yet we can limit Him with our unbelief. Nothing is impossible with God. But all things are possible to them that believe. Your unbelief can limit God. And that's why it is so important to get to the spirit of faith, to get into the Word of God and be stretched, be expanded. Amen. It is important for us to understand that we are interconnected. We affect one another. And if we watch the news and even hear the news, you know that there is a global agenda that is happening, beginning to unfold. And we are part of the world. We are part of the globe. Unless we fight the battle of faith, Unless we advance the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are no match for the devils. Unless you come into Christ, into his mind, and not be presumptuous, and not be individualistic, and not be self-centered, you are no match for the devil. We must treasure and cherish each other as spiritual family members. Fellowshipping together, working together, praying for one another. God's word for you is to be actively involved in your home church. You are not orphans. You have a spiritual home. You have a spiritual family. If you could just be bothered to embrace it, to pray for your spiritual family, to pray for your brothers and sisters, not only to pray for them, but don't be in such a hurry to leave church at the end of the service if you could find some time to greet one another, to acknowledge one another, to love one another, 
to recognize one another. Where the people work together, function together in unity, there God commands His blessings. It is not the will of God for us to be so wrapped up in ourselves, to be so individually withdrawn that we have no time, no affection for each other. This is our home. Nobody is as close to you as your spiritual brothers and sisters. Let the Holy Spirit stir up in us holy affections, emotions for one another. For the body of Christ, not just for a few people that you favor or think that they're good enough for you. We must treasure and cherish one another, build a strong spiritual bonding with one another in the Lord. No one can grow by himself or herself. We need one another to grow up spiritually, powerfully. As we flow, we will grow. As we flow in the river of life, we will grow in this realm of life. How to be God's channel for victory? Number one, to be God's channel for victory, you must have love for people. Love for people. Love for people. For anyone. God is no respecter of persons. God is not preferential. God's love for people. Anyone. Anyone that God has sent across your path. Including your family. Including those that you don't know. Including those that you work with. Including those that you meet in the street. Those that you just bump into. Because God can use you anywhere, anytime. God's love has no favorites, and God is never discriminating. There are no discriminations in the love of God. And if we start harboring any negative thoughts towards unbelievers, the lost, the Gentiles, we need to repent. Because God loves them. God loves the saved and the unsaved, the found and the lost. Psalm 42, verse 7. Deep calleth unto deep. Let's just pause for a moment. Deep calleth unto deep. There is a depth to every man, every woman. And you need to dig deep on the inside of you. There is a depth in you that you may not even have discovered, that you may not even have known. There is a depth in you. Come on, say with me, there is a depth in me. If you look at a corpse, if you look at a body, the body is just the outer layer. It's just a corpse. It's just a heap of flesh. With all the complicated physical makeup on the inside that the doctors have to study. The second layer is the soul. The soul with all of its intellectual compartments. Emotional departments. Volitional offices. Within the intellectual department, there is the memory bank, there is the analytical office, there's the organization faculty. There's also the language center, the number, the art, the music center. Your soul is very deep and complicated. And the more you expand it, the more you develop it, the better it will work for you. 
the more you understand your soul and how your soul functions, the more in charge you will be of your life. That's the second part of you. The second layer. Then the deepest part of you, of me, is our spirit. Your spirit is a mystery to your soul and a mystery to your body. You can't understand it. You can't comprehend it. You cannot find it in the x-ray. You cannot find it with the ultrasound. But you can find it in the word of life in the Bible. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you information in the Bible about your spirit. Information in the Bible about your soul. Information in the Bible about your body. And that's why the deeper you dig into the Word of God, the more versatile you become, the more powerful you become, the stronger and the healthier you become. Your spirit is the most powerful part of you. The most powerful part of any man, for that's where your superior, supernatural faculties reside and function. Your spirit must rise up. Your spirit needs to be stirred up. Your spirit needs to rise up to rule over, to take control of your soul and your physical body. And that's the formula for success. Your soul without the control of the Holy Spirit will go everywhere without your control. That's when anger bursts into flame and destroy your homes. That's when depression come and take hold of you. That's where selfishness talks. We must bring our soul, we must subjugate our soul by our spirit. That's our formula for success. Our bodies also need to be subjugated by our spirit. There are occasional emotional and mental and relational attacks. The devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So occasionally, you will experience attacks against the physical and the soulish part of you. That's why it is so, so important that your spirit is active and alive. Because that's when your spirit will rise up and discern the presence of demons and attack them. Can we say amen? When we talk about deep calleth unto deep, we're talking about the depth of God calling the depth of you. His deep calling your deep. Deep calleth unto deep. You may love your children, you may take care of your children, but you can't fellowship with your children. I love my dog, I love my puppy, but I can't fellowship with my dog because we are not the same level. God has created mankind for fellowship. He has created you and he has had you born again so that his deep can call unto your deep. Deep calleth unto deep. His heart calling your heart. His depth reaching out for your depth. The depth of God, His heart, His desire, His actions, calling out to your depth, your spirit, the essential part of you. God breathed into Adam, into Eve, part of Himself. He breathed into them, and both of them became a living soul. Why did He breathe into them? It's so that He could call them out. For fellowship. They were walking in the Garden of Eden, always ready for the call of the Creator for fellowship. But then they opened their spirit to the devil. They started to engage a conversation with the devil, 
And when they open their spirit to listen and to converse with the devil, listen, they lost their place of depth with God. They lost the place of communion with their creator, with their God. And the minute they lost that place of fellowship, they lost the place of dominion. They lost the place of rulership over creation. Nature took a higher position over themselves, and nature then became a threat instead of a servant to them. What's the anointing? Every one of us, you and I, we carry a spiritual atmosphere. You and I carry a spiritual atmosphere. Whether it's an atmosphere of faith or an atmosphere of unbelief. An atmosphere of love and compassion or an atmosphere of criticism, judgmentalism. An atmosphere of forgiveness and generosity or an atmosphere of bitterness and meanness. A critical spirit is a mean spirit. Your face changes. Every part about you changes to become mean and critical and judgmental. And you grieve the Holy Spirit away from you. God is never, never, God is never critical, judgmental, and mean with anybody. The anointing. The anointing is the spiritual atmosphere. We can be covered by the anointing or be covered by a demonic presence. When you walk into a place that worships demons, when you walk into a place that, you know, that, uh, where a fornication is common, where gossips are common, you walk into a demonic atmosphere. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 in the Amplified Bible, the Spirit of God was moving or hovering or brooding over the face of the earth. When we talk about the spiritual covering, when we talk about the spiritual atmosphere, we're talking about the spirits that brood over. We're talking about the spirits that hover over. You cannot see them with your eyes. You can't see them, but you receive thoughts from them. You receive thoughts and ideas from them. You receive emotions from them. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden, remove, referring to the devil's burden, shall be taken away from off your shoulder, and his yoke, the devil's yoke, shall be removed from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It's very important for us not to be religious. A person who is religious thinks that everything is up to God. It's up to God. It's up to God, whatever he wants to do, whatever he wants to say, whatever he wants to do. No, 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 that's not the Bible. Dispensationally, it's God. God does have a calendar. He does have an agenda. Dispensationally, it's reviewed in the Bible. But individually, your life is your choice. He loves you too much to interfere. He loves you too much. He will not control. He will not manipulate. He will not take over. 
What your life is like is completely your choice. You have to make your life your own. Your soul is yours to make. And you will take your soul with you to heaven. You will take your soul with you to heaven. Your soul is your making. If you look at a baby, and then you see how a baby transitions I'm talking about the spirit that is in that flesh. Remember, within you, that is the spirit. You're more than what looks like on the outside. So if you look at a baby with a limited size, with a limited height, and that baby continues to grow, and all the way through childhood to adolescence to adulthood, but the spirit does not change. The spirit will grow. The spirit will become more and more powerful if he or she gets born again. But what will change is the soul. That's why the evangelicals say, let's go win souls. The soul is your personality, your character, your you, you, yourself, your life that you will take with you to heaven after you have left this place. That's why the Word of God says, work out your own salvation. Not referring to the fact that you will go to hell, working out your own salvation. That means the saving grace that God has brought into your life. Come on, work it. Stir it up. Lift it up. Let it penetrate into your thinking, into your feeling, into your will. Let it move in every part of your being, in your attitudes, in your decisions, in your interactions with people, in your decisions, in your business, in your family life, in every part of you. That's what that is about. Life is very precious. The lifespan that we have is precious. If we live 90 years, what am I doing with those 90 years? What am I doing? What am I doing with the time that God has given to me? With the time spent that I have? What have I been doing? Am I just making money and making money? Like a slave, like Samson. A slave on a treadmill. You must never allow the devil to turn your life into a treadmill. Whether it's a treadmill of your domestic work, a treadmill of your business work, a treadmill even of your church work. Life is life. It's vibrant. It's creative. Led by the Holy Spirit and powered by God. Can we say amen? amen. Full of joy. Full of power. Can we say amen? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Liberty. Amen. Say to the person next to you, I'm not a slave. I'm a free man. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 14 verse 6, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. Judges 14 verse 6, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. That's the gift of the working of miracles. That's the gift of faith. Amen. The Spirit of God can come mightily upon you. How many of us want that? Yes. Come on. Come on. How many of you want that? Come on. Lift up your hands. Yes. Amen. The Spirit of God can come mightily upon any believer. God is no respecter of persons. But you can limit him with unbelief. You can limit him with unbelief. You can limit him if you're always busy, busy, busy. Praise God. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. This is Jesus speaking. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily. Although that's Judges. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. There's the Holy Spirit in you, and there is the Holy Spirit upon you. 
There is an anointing within. There's an anointing upon. Lift up your hands and say, yes, I want that. Amen. There is a deep calling unto deep. There is an anointing that will fall upon you. When your heart becomes his heart. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2. Isaiah 60 verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and grows darkness to people. The devil, you know, the devil is a counterfeit. Whatever God does, he tries to copy. He's a copycat. So in Christ, we have the anointing. In the world, you have the darkness. In the demonic realm, there is the darkness. I don't understand why, but I feel so annoyed. I don't understand why, but I feel so confused. Because there's darkness covering you. Because there are demons hovering over you. I don't know why, but I just want to get drunk. I don't know why, but I just want to do drugs. Why? Because there are devils hovering over you, and they want to do drugs through your body. They want to do drinking through your body. They want to have sex through your body. Because understand that demons, they are disembodied spirits. They don't have a body with which to function. And that's why they are seeking, wanting to function through people's bodies. Your body is very, very important. What are spirits of sickness and disease? Demons. They are called demons of infirmities. They are called afflicting spirits. They sit on you, sit on the inside of you, and bringing pain, and bringing pain, and bringing pain to your body, bringing destructions to the system that God has put within your body. And that's why Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. There's such a thing called demonic oppression on the inside of the body to bring sickness and disease. And as soon as those demons are cast out, then what happened? They started to function. I was reading the story of Smith Wigglesworth, and he was saying that he went to this place. And um, he wasn't famous then. He went to this place, and there was this lady. You know, she's like a very blessed congregation member in her church, but then she's already like uh, in her senior age, and she fell, down a, she fell down her chair and broke her legs. So she couldn't go to church. And so the pastor of that church, you know, because Smith Wigglesworth had been invited to preach in his church and asked him if he could go and, and pray for that woman. And so she, he went and he went and uh, he asked that woman, do you believe that you would be healed? And the woman said, yeah, yeah, I believe I would be healed. And then her husband, who is confined to a wheelchair, he said he had been confined to his wheelchair for 20 years. And he said, no, I don't ever believe. You, you, you can never persuade me to believe. There's no such thing. I won't believe. I don't ever believe. Don't even talk to me. And, and Smith Wigglesworth said, that's fine. And so he went and he laid hand and prayed for that woman. And instantaneously, she got healed. The doctor had told her because she's old. So her bones were like... Uh, difficult to heal. Her bones had no nutrition and her bones were not very organic, so to speak. But she was instantaneously healed. And when her husband saw her healed, he said, would you come pray for me? <laughs> Get me out of this wheelchair. And Smith Wigglesworth, you know, on the inside, he was thinking, you dirty sinner. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, he didn't say that. Of course, God corrected him on the spot because God loves him. God loved that man. And then he said, yes, of course, I would pray for you. And right away, 20 years, he had been confined in that wheelchair and he was instantaneously healed, got out of that wheelchair and walked up and down, climbed and run up and down the stairs. God is awesome. And that's why, how many of you know that it's in the commandment that we shall not lie? Because our tongue is reserved for testimonies. 
If you lie, no people will believe you. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So if you look at Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. See, there was darkness there. But light broke in. Amen. Hallelujah. And defeated that darkness. But the Lord shall arise upon you and shall be seen. His glory shall be seen upon you. How many of you want God's light to be upon you? Lift up your hands. I want His light, not darkness. I want His light. Understand that spirits hover around people. The Holy Spirit is always seeking to impart His glory into us. But the devil is always seeking to control us, to manipulate us. So look at these symptoms. You know, whatever I tell you, please listen. The Bible is not a law book. So whatever I tell you is for you to, you know, look at yourself and correct yourself. We all need to, you know, adjust ourselves. We all need to adjust ourselves from time to time. You know, it's good to live a repentant life. A repentant life that means as soon as I know that I'm wrong, I will change myself. Amen? Come on, say with me, I'm quick to repent. Quick to turn back to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's very important for us to do that. Amen. Very important to do that. So if we find ourselves irritable, angry, annoyed, confused, harassed, tormented, depressed, most of the time, then there is a, listen to this, habitual presence of darkness over you. You need to rebuke that. You need to rebuke that. You need to cast it out. Yet, if there is a brightness, a lightness, a liberty, holiness, peace and joy over you, then you've got the anointing and the presence of God upon you. Understand that God can anoint you, but He cannot correct your attitude. He can only prompt you, but the only person who can correct you is... Come on. The only person who can correct you is... Yourself. Not even God. Only you can correct yourself on the inside. Amen? If God can correct you, every one of us will be in heaven, don't you think? He would just correct everybody. <laughs> no. If you are determined to sit in unbelief, if you are determined to sit in rebellion, if you are determined to sit in the place of unforgiveness, He can't change you. He will grieve over you. He will prompt you the best He can. He will advise you the best He can. But the only person who can change you is, come on, is myself. Come on, say with me, myself. myself. That means you are very important. Okay, the anointing is drawn to God's people to drive away darkness, to destroy evil. Amen. The anointing for families, for businesses, churches, nations is very, very precious and powerful. It's for our assignments, for our calling. It is not hard. When you have the anointing, you have the flow. When you have the anointing, you have the grace. Come on, lift up your hands and say anointing. Anointing. Come on me. Come on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Write this down. Don't quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. Quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit will block the flow. When you are in the flow, you are in the growth. When you are in the flow, you are in the growth. How many of you want your business to grow? How many of you want your health to grow? Your joy to grow? Your goodness to grow? So be in the flow of the Holy Ghost, the flow of the river of life. Listen to this. Once again, it's for us to change and correct ourselves. A hardened, unbelieving, jealous. Now, every word's given to me by the Holy Spirit, okay? 
uncompassionate? If you know that you don't have any compassion for people, this is what I do. I said, Lord, I noticed that my compassion is so little. Lord, I'm so sorry. Help me. You know, it's good to talk to God. Good to talk to God. It's good to know where I need to change. And please, God, change me. God is not into perfectionism. Okay? The church is not where everybody wears a mask. I just want to impress everybody how good I am. I just want to impress everybody how spiritual I am. No, no, no. The place is not a place where you wear a mask. The church is a place where everyone can open up. When I first got saved, I was always, you know, in the front. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> Pray for me. Pray for me. The church is where you can be open and get people to pray for you. I would feel very sad if the Water Springs Faith Church is a church where everybody wears a mask. The church is your spiritual home. I keep getting this picture of the lamb gathering together, and there's one lamb hurting, and all the lamb, there's no S, hey? And all the, is there S for lambs? One lamb and two? Lamb, no S, hey? Oh, yes, two lambs. Okay, so there's one lamb, <laughs> one lamb hurting, and all the lambs gather around that lamb to pray for that lamb. I got that image from the Lord. Come on, say with me, we need to gather together. We need to gather around each other. We need to support one another. I, I'm very blessed by the ladies' work out. Because I realized that there were those that supported Chandra. I realized that. I mean, I supported her. In my flesh, I didn't want to come. But in my spirit, you're going. <laughs> it's good to support one another. How many of you believe that? How many of you have received people's support for you? And how many of you are happy to support someone else? Come on, this is a God thing. This is a God thing. Everybody needs to be supported. There is no shame about it. The church is where you can be open, is where you can be vulnerable. Amen. It's where you will not be despised, rejected, looked down upon. Can we say amen? Amen. The home is where you can be open, where you can be vulnerable. Listen to me. In your family, you should never use sarcasm. You should never use cynicism. You should never mock at somebody's mistakes. You should never laugh at somebody's mistakes. If somebody is coming to you for comfort, someone is coming to you for encouragement, sit down with that person and talk gently, encouragingly, instead of finding folks. Can we say amen? Amen. Wives, if your husband comes to you and asks for support, you don't point to your husband and say, you are a big man, why do you need support? Oh, you are a big man, come on, go out and be strong, be courageous. No. <laughs> Can we say amen? If your husband comes to you and asks for a word of encouragement and a word of support, what do you do? Hug him. Bless him. I'm standing with you. I love you, darling. How are you doing? We are together in this. We're husband and wife. Can we say amen? Come on. Come on. Lift up your hands. Say amen. 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 Glory be to God. And by the same token, if your wife comes to you, and need support and encouragement, and you do the same. Be gentle towards one another. Be strong against the devil, but be gentle with one another. Can we say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and say with me, Thank you, Lord. Make me gentle with the people around me. Gentle and soft. Gracious. One more time. Gentle. Soft. And gracious. How many of you believe that Jesus is gentle? Yes. How many of you believe that there's power in gentleness? Amen. So going back to the list, 
uncompassionate, unteachable, a prideful, harsh, critical, bitter, and unforgiving spirit, a tongue that is untamed, judgmental, all that I have listed above, they repel the Holy Spirit. They repel the Holy Ghost. They deplete and drain the human spirit. They exalt the flesh. Listen to this. They attract demons. Now, in and of ourselves, in our flesh, we can make a small mistake. But if you keep making that small mistake, even though the Lord has been prompting you to change, even though the Holy Spirit has been prompting you to change, but you still keep doing that, then it becomes bigger and bigger. It's just like a piece of rotten meat. And it gets bigger. And it gets more and more smelly. Guess what will come? Flies. They attract demons. And that's why there will be strife in the house. There will be sickness and disease. Accidents. Calamities. Because sin attracts demons. That's the law of the Spirit. So it's very important that we understand that and correct ourselves. What draws and attracts the anointing, on the other hand, is the love of God. It's the love of God. Repentance is good. Repentance means I'm adjusting my attitude, my mindset. I'm learning. I'm growing from faith to faith, from glory to glory. What draws and attracts the anointing is the supernatural love of God. The supernatural love of God. Why do you think we pray in the Holy Ghost? Why do you think we wake up in the morning? Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. As you pray in tongues, the love of God comes. As you pray in tongues, the love of God is imparted to you. As you pray in tongues, the love of God is stirred up on the inside of you, bubbles up from the inside of you. And I'm talking about the love of God for you and the love of God through you. Can we say amen? Love is the main ingredient, is the main thing, is the main thing. If you have love, you will not criticize others. When you have love, you will not be mean and harsh. When you have the love of God, you'll be compassionate and forgiving. When you have love, you'll be happy to see people blessed. You'll be happy to see sinners saved. Can we say amen? It's the love for God, the love for the truth. There is a continual flow of that love on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What are Christians? God's anointed channels. Lift up your hands and say, I'm God's anointed channel. Amen. If you look at Proverbs chapter 27, uh, 20, 27, Proverbs 20, 27, Proverbs 20, 27. Can you read that together with me? One, two, three. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. What do you burn a candle for? Light. Candle is for light. Your spirit is where you receive light, revelation, guidance, teachings, directions from God. Your spirit is where your future is revealed to you. Assignments given to you. Amen. Listen to me. Many Christians, I'm talking about even born again, spirit-filled Christians, they ignore their spirit. They are soulish and shallow. Their spirit stays untrained, untapped, and therefore dormant. We're always trying to serve God with our intelligence. Serve God with our fervency. Serve God with our struggles. 
serve God with our frustrations. Why? Because your spirit is not tapped into. You haven't taken time to ask and wait. And when God says something, it becomes impossible because the mind will rise up and say, it's impossible, it's ridiculous, because the mind will fight the spirit. So what rules that person's life is their human will, intellect, and feelings. The human soul then becomes the boss, unchallenged, untamed, and uneducated. What's the result? What can we see? You see Christians staying inferior to evil spirits, subjugated, victimized, and terrorized. Coming down with sickness and disease, coming down with accidents, coming down with strives and quarrels all the time. That's how you know who has been controlling your life. It's better to change. Can we say amen? Lift up your hands and say change. We need to receive the empowering of the Holy Spirit in our born-again spirit. Then spiritual growth will happen. If you look at Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Luke 24, verse 49. How many of you believe that there is still room for you to grow? Is there room for us to grow? Do we want to grow? Yes. Yes, all the time. More and more, higher and higher. Luke 24, verse 49. What did Jesus say? Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from where? From on high. What hovers over you? Amen? What is that? In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. Verse 3 to 4, Acts chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. You can never tame a Christian on fire for God. He or she cannot be tamed. Okay, very, very powerful. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Wow. How many of you want that? How many of you want the fire of God? Hey, I want the fire. I want the fire. I want the fire. Amen. Very much. Burning in me, burning in me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When you have the fire, you have the love. When you have the fire, you have the passion. When you have the fire, you have the motivation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you ask me, Pastor Dora, isn't it good enough that I'm always reading my Bible? I'm reciting scriptures. I'm reading my Bible. Isn't that good enough? Well, you need to know the one who wrote the Bible. Not only do we know the book, we need to know the author of that book. Who is the author? The Holy Spirit. Because only the Holy Spirit can reveal to you the mysteries, the secrets, the power, the enablement in the book. Can we say amen? amen. The depth. Remember, we're talking about deep, call it unto deep. Listen to me. There is a nobility in you. I got that very clearly from the Holy Spirit. There is a nobility on the inside of each man and each woman. On the inside of every man and every woman. There is a nobility in you that wants to be your best, that wants to do your best, that wants to bless people, that never wants to hurt anybody, never wants to harm anybody, never to say anything bad, never to scold anyone. How many of you know that? Come on. Is, isn't it in you? Yes. Get to know yourself deeper. No, there is a nobility in you. Amen. At the same time, there is also a beast. <laughs> There's also a beast on the inside of every person. You can read that in Psalm 73, verse 22. So, what am I talking about? It is a matter of which one you are feeding. 
which one you are feeding, which one you are nurturing, which one you listen to, which one you obey, which one you yield to. The nobility or the beast. Listen to your conscience. Listen to the very depth of yourself. There's a yearning there. And you have the power to draw out the beast or the prince, the nobility. The higher you or the base you. You have the power to draw out the prince or the beast from another person. Are you appealing to the beast or to the prince or the princess? Whenever I'm with you, I want to draw out the prince or the princess. I want to draw out the good from you. I want to draw out the good from you. I want to draw out the good from you. I want to draw out the good from you. Don't you want to do that? Would you like to do that? Come on, lift up your hands and say, I want to draw out the best. I want to draw out the prince. I want to draw out the princess from whoever I am with. That's the depth. The devil wants to draw out the beast, but the Holy Spirit wants to draw out the prince or the princess. It is your choice whom to feed, whom to listen to, whom to yield to, whom to practice. Your spirit is real. The reality of your spirit, your spirit is very, very real. I mentioned just now there are three parts to you. This flesh called your body. Your soul is where you think, where you feel, where you make decisions. Your spirit is that part, the deepest part of you, that consciousness. Another word for your spirit, it's your consciousness. How many of you know that no matter how old you are, your consciousness does not change? Isn't that right? Even when you look into the mirror, you're conscious of yourself. Yourself does not change. Your outward appearance may change. Your soul may change. But your spirit does not change. That's your consciousness. It's a very, very important part of you that's very, very powerful. And listen to me, church. The devil wants to break your house and evict your spirit. How many of you know that as soon as the body is broken, the spirit has to go? Once your brain is damaged, your mind cannot function because the mind is different from your brain. That's why the Lord can heal your mind, even when your brain has been damaged. Don't believe in dementia. Don't think that because you're getting old, your brain is decaying. No. The Lord told me that it's not aging, it's transitioning. We are being transitioned from earth to heaven. That's why the Word of God says, put on the new man. Every day, we need to put on more and more and more of the new man and put off more and more and more of the old man. Somebody said, well, you got born again once and for all. Why do you have to keep putting on and putting off? Just do it once and for all. That person hasn't got the revelation. You are putting off and putting on on a continual basis because you're growing. You're growing. You're growing. How many of us have noticed that a baby will grow up? And a baby will grow up and grow up and grow up physically until what age? I need a doctor to help me. Until what age? When the body reaches maturity. 18. That's the age of puberty, right? And then guess what? The body will start to go down. Your metabolism starts to slow down naturally. Your brain started to slow down naturally. And that's why we need to transition. 
That's why we need to put off the old man. The old man is the man that wants to sin, that wants to be impulsive, that wants to be self-centered. We need to be continually putting that off and continually putting on the Spirit, putting on the Spirit, putting on the Spirit. So that's why there is a what? A putting on of your spiritual power when your natural power has gone down. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's called transitioning. You are transitioning from the earth to a higher realm, which is called the heaven. So don't you think we need to prepare ourselves? Don't you think we need to prepare ourselves? Amen. Need to prepare yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Stir up your spiritual mind. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Put on the new man. More and more spiritual every day. Higher and higher we go every day. Can we say amen? Glory be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants our spirit to rule over the evil spirits. So they cannot boss us. They cannot shorten our lives on earth. Amen. Let's finish with this. Go to Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to 26. Exodus 23, verse 25 to 26. I don't know why. I received God's word very quickly, but um, I can't seem to finish my sermon. So. <laughs> Exodus 23, 25 to 26. All right. And you shall serve the Lord your God. Now, understand the word serve does not mean, yeah, I'll serve the Lord from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. No, service of the heart. Serving God from our hearts. Serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. I will take sickness away from the midst of you. There shall nothing cause their young. That means no miscarriage, nor be barren in your land. The number of your days I will fulfill. How many of you know that the word fulfill is made of two words? Fully fill. Not half fill. Not even 80% fill. Fully fill to the overflowing. That's how good God is. Now I want you to listen to me, church. It's very important, okay? Now you need to speak this scripture over yourself and over your household. You need to pray this over yourself and over your household because that's the will of God. Pray this, confess this over yourself. When you read the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, understand that there are corrections, all right? So God is not speaking those words to condemn us, to put us down, you know. No, 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 to belittle us, no. As I said yes, uh, last Sunday, don't make the Bible into a law book, no. So those scriptures are there to let us know what is not the will of God. Anything that is negative, that's not the will of God. It's for us to know how not to behave like that, how not to think like that. I use those, you know, as a checklist for myself. So when I pray, I said, Lord, you protect me so I won't be mean. You protect me so that I won't be competitive. Protect me so that I won't be angry. Father God, I renounce those negative animosity feelings. Get out in the name of Jesus. All right? So when you know that, you can pray for yourself to protect yourself and uh, get rid of all those demons. So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say to you is that understand that in the Old Testament, you know, it's very easy for us to think, oh, so I'm not serving the Lord, so I won't be blessed. My bread and water will not be best, and that's why I still have sickness. And that's why, you know, I had just had a miscarriage. <laughs> No, that's not what God is saying. You know, understand that's not what God is saying. What God is saying is that if you do not, if you will not allow your sin to block the flow of my blessings into your life, do not allow your bad thoughts, your ugly attitude to block the flow of God's more than good and perfect will into your life. Do you get it? 
God is saying, that's my best for you. That's my highest will for you. That's what I want you to have. But there is the devil there. When you sin, he will use your sin to block, to block my blessings. They can't come to you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If you do, say amen. 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 It's very important. Very important. The prosperity of our soul allows health for our body. And prosperity is a good, is a good thing for our living. Amen. So cherish your born again spirit. That's your channel to receive from God and to reach out to others. A channel is for receiving and giving. Say with me, I receive to give. One more time. I receive to give. How many of you have ever seen a hoarder's house? It's so terrible, isn't it? I have been to one because we were looking for a property, and that was a hoarder's property. Wow. It's like, what a sight. It was so, so filthy. It was so ugly. And, you know, newspaper, you know, heaps of newspaper everywhere, junk everywhere. A hoarder is somebody who just wants everything for himself. <laughs> don't want to chuck anything, don't want to waste anything, don't want to throw away everything. And as a result, guess what? The house becomes a rubbish bin. Come on, say with me, I receive to give. One more time, I receive to give. And guess what? Give and it shall be given unto you. So the more you give, the more you, one more time, the more I give, the more I receive. The more I give, the more I receive. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Praise God. Amen.